does it to frighten you every time. He wants you jump in. <laughs> My name is Ricardo Padierne, and I did uh, most of the art for the game. Well, it was fucking exciting, to be honest. I, I didn't know we were going to do a, a world game. And as soon as we started, I just started gaming like crazy. I, I love the Genesis. <laughs> and honestly, being able to work on it more, it, it, was, it was insane. Yeah. was really simple, to be honest. Uh, the designs, the original ones, are so good, and they have such uh, energy and, and, and gesture and all that, and the design is so well, well thought out that uh, it was really easy to, to convert them into, into the modern version, to be honest. Not modern, because I feel like those designs are still very, very relevant, but um, definitely these versions uh, were very different, especially because they were black and white. So the black and white um, version of them takes away the color, so we need to make sure that the, the contrast is there. But uh, they, they, they were amazing at the beginning, so it was really simple, really easy. Uh, in my work, I, I usually reference a lot uh, Alex Ross and Frank Miller. Uh, not directly, because I was a big fan of them, I still am, uh, when I was younger. But uh, nowadays, I, I have it in my subconscious. And when Marco came with the idea of like making everything black and white and having this color accent was so Frank Miller that I just uh, revisited them and, and got the, the iconic uh, power of the shapes of Fra Frank Miller and also the realism of Alex Ross into the game. And it was a really nice combo, to be honest. Not, not, not quite, to be honest. I, I tend to, to look at all masters and classic painters because I have a, such a painterly style. But definitely when I, I was at the beginning of my, not career, but uh, my art journey when I was in the university, I studied a lot of Frank Miller. I was obsessed with uh, Sin City and Alex Ross Kingdom Come uh, was uh, mind breaking for me. I, I just uh, couldn't comprehend how someone could uh, do such a uh, be such a good job on realism and detail on such a big comic, and it was uh, insane. Yeah. I, I will talk briefly, and if you want, guys, you can buy my tutorial. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I use 3D uh, as a way of like getting uh, good realism really fast. And my process is really simple. I, I rely a lot on, on 2D for like establishing the the shapes and making everything um, stylish and cool because, you know, uh, art, uh, painting, drawing has a gesture that 3D cannot achieve. At least at, at, least at the beginning, you know, you can, uh, you can get an 80% of 3D really fast, but that 20% that makes a Blizzard cinematic takes four times more than that 80%. So I get to that 80% or 70 something or whatever, and I just paint on top. And that's the process I get. That way I can really depict realism without taking months of like uh, getting references, uh, taking pictures of myself, which I still do, especially for faces because 3D faces are really ugly, to be honest. It's very difficult to make them pretty. So I just, yeah, I just jam 3D uh, as a way of getting realism, yeah. Let me think. Ah, oh, well, yeah, no, I remember. One of the most difficult ones was the, was the I don't remember the name, the flamethrower guy. Schweizer. Okay, I'm not going to use that one because I'm not going to... Schweizer what? Schweizer. Schweizer. I, I'm really bad at German names. I'm so, it's German. Oh my God, maybe this is worse. I don't know. No, it's good. <laughs> Schweizer. 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 Okay, Schweizer. Okay, let's do it. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm going to do it official. Blotches 2. It's coming. <laughs> Spicer was uh, one of the, the most difficult ones because he was really small. So to come up with the dashboard, we started like doing the cover and then we started separating the characters. So some, some of them were smaller in the format than others. So this one was really small. And because it was a cover, I was trying to get all the details on everyone so people could like point them and say, okay, this is the guy. But this one was so small that I had to redo it at the end because uh, the details were too much, you know? In the composition, he was taking too much importance and everyone else was like, comparatively speaking, less detailed because he was really small and very, very detailed. So that, that was a big challenge that we had and at the end we decided to, to definitely like change. 
there is one called Triglo that uh, I really love. He's a marauder, and I remember Marco did like I don't remember it was like I don't think it was last year, but he did uh, not so long ago. He did a portrait of the character, and he did. Oh, I remember he did also a full full yeah. statue. Yes, um, I would love to depict that guy, but not only in an illustration. I would love to to do him, you know, good. I would love to prepare some sort of like plot yeah. <laughs> on the guy. That would be amazing. But yeah, that guy that guy is my my go to. Decoy 5 and Pluto are probably the, the ones that I like the most. I really love Steel Beam because he has such an iconic shape and, and he is very powerful. Uh, his stance is very, very potent and the character is very well depicted. But also I think Decoy 5 especially is, is, is very nice pose. Even if it's my art, you know, it's, uh, I really love that one. Very nice, to be honest. I mean, Marco is the best coach. To be <laughs> like, he's a uh, very, you know, like um, <laughs> clear with the feedback, and I really like that. Many art directors are very hesitant, and they don't like it. people end up with the mediocre uh, product because the art director doesn't have the balls to say what it needs to be said, and they don't have the experience to also understand exactly what the problem is. And many times. I have a lot of freedom, don't get me wrong, like Marco uh, trusts me a lot, but also it's very important to have someone you can rely on and tell, tell them, hey, do you think this is good? No, this is bad because this and this, and that's really, really, uh, really, really good. Well, it was actually mesmerizing because I didn't know you could like depict a character so well in such a small, um, size, you know, like you get the concept with a lot of detail and then the miniature is so small that you are like, okay, this is not going to look good. But when you actually see it live, it's insane because you can see all the crevices and all the details that the concept had, even if some of them need to be simplified because, you know, the scale doesn't allow for more. But really these miniatures are, I don't know, like I didn't, I didn't know they could be so detailed to be honest. It was very, very nice. Best. Wow. There is one, I don't know if I can talk about it, but it's the, the final, final, final boss. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I came here uh, to play test the game, I was uh, too many inputs, you know, like it was a lot of things I haven't seen. And it was, I was coming from a place where I was at the home, you know, drawing and preparing everything. And when I came here and saw everything, it was like, Insane, like uh, I, I think we played like 40 hours in a week and it was like role playing, you know, in the table, just making decisions, very tense. I remember some days I came back home with a headache because I was like, this is, I'm, I'm thinking a lot, you know, I'm trying to make the best move possible. And it was a really intense and very powerful experience. I really loved it, to be honest. And I loved it so much that uh, when I came back, I asked for a test, play test, uh, to get uh, to get it at home. And I have been playing since then, like uh, with uh, several groups. When I was here, I play uh, as a player, and it was a good experience. But hostile was something else, like being able to to you know to to fake actions to to try to deceive the players to make them think they are doing great but at the same time you're preparing a new plan i i really like it there is one tarot card that pulls people <laughs> the ruler that's my favorite card that's insane card because you can prepare traps and this is tip guys you can prepare traps and then you can pull people into the traps and Liam showed me that. That's a very nice trick, and I think can can lead to some nice heart attacks uh, for the players. <laughs> I I want people to suffer, and I want people to to believe they are hopeless. Okay, I incorporated this Spanglish to the studio, and I think it has gone it has done a really good job into having more lexic to to explain things. <laughs> Mapongo, machango. Several words that work really well to depict that something is really cool or it's not. Machango is from Canary Island and it's like a small kid, but uh, in a good way. Like, you know, like love, hateful love. It's like, uh, tu Majango. 
and the kid comes. And I like to use it uh, to the pick, I don't know, like a dude, you know, like a, that's, that's the definition basically. Okay. And for example, Papongo, it's something that I created on my own and it's a word that doesn't mean anything but it's a machango, but it's a different way. But Papinga doesn't exist and it's uh, my harvest, no? It's my own, I, I create it, I caress it. Mamacita is a beautiful lady, young lady. That's a mamacita. That's a, but that's more Cuban, you know? Mamacita, you know? But it's, it's really not Cuban. It's a fake Cuban. I would say not, nobody in Cuba says mamacita. I don't think so. I will have to ask my, my cousin because he's a real Cuban, not like me that I'm a really fake Cuban. <laughs> Plan. <laughs> Brutalicus is like, uh, okay, I like this. Plan locked. Potente dragones is like, we are dragons, we are super powerful. La absoluta pachanga colombiana se viene, okay. This is, a, the absolute Colombian party is coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's what is going on there, you know? Yes, absoluta pachanga colombiana is coming, guys. It's fucking insane. Dude, I read myself and I don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah.